Hey guys, Jim here. Time to do another video and, and take a look at something that I feel is very, very exciting. This is a uh, very new acquisition of mine. I'm bumping it ahead of a lot of other videos that I have to get done because I've been playing with this ever since I got it. Pretty much carried it every single day. And everybody on Instagram is going nuts saying we need to see a video on it and see some real details. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. What we're looking at is the Decepticon 1 by Custom Knife Factory, designed by Alexi Konijin. What you're looking at here is, in my opinion, a mid-tech masterpiece. This is a knife that when I first saw the Custom, the original design, which was slightly different than this, but same basic concept, I went apeshit crazy. I had to have one, and as most of you know that have ever seen it and tried to get it, you realize that's never going to happen. It's pretty much impossible. I am working a deal right now to try to get a Custom, but I don't know if that's going to go through or not. So when I found out that my buddy Mike over at uh, Custom Knife Factory in Russia was going to be putting on a mid-tech version, I got excited. Now, I got a chance to see Mike, meet him in person at the Blade Show 2014, and that's when I got my asymmetric, also by the same designer. Alexi also designed this. I've already done a full video on this, and I've been really happy with it. This is a really, really nice knife, but this is a completely different league. It is substantial. When you feel this in the hand, it's pretty much like holding a bodega. So if you've ever handled a Todd Bag bodega, you felt the thickness, you felt the weight of Todd's work, then you're going to get a basic idea of what it's going to be like to hold this. Let me give you a couple of close-ups here as we uh, begin to talk about it. And you'll see the intricate craftsmanship that goes into this. Now, it is a mid-tech knife. However, it doesn't look or feel or represent itself like a mid-tech. I'm telling you right now, this is as close to holding a thousand dollar custom in your hands as you could imagine. Everything is just dead on perfect. We've seen a lot of makers come out with some really good mid-tech options for their custom work and it never, you know, if you hold it side by side with the true custom, it really doesn't compare all that well. It'll have the same basic idea, the same basic design, but there are things about it that are obviously going to be, you know, easier to do and much less expensive in, in, in which to manufacture. This does not feel like an inexpensive option to a custom. It feels like you're holding a custom. Now, the way they're doing their production, mine is number five of the initial 30. So they're going to make 30 like this. Come on, focus. Thank you. They're going to make 30 like this, and then they're going to offer a run of 200. The original 30 are all spoken for as far as I know, but they are accepting emails to get on the list for the 200. So you want to go to from RussiaWithKnives.com or CustomKnifeFactory.com, get a hold of Mike, and get on that list. Visit him on Instagram, which is just at Custom Knife Factory. Do what you got to do, because I'm telling you, I am blown away by the knife. The construction, the design, the action. This thing is just friggin' incredible. There's the lock up on it, by the way, before I forget to get to that, with a steel lock bar insert. So let's talk about the dimensions, because it's a little bigger than I think some people may be expecting. It's an eight and a quarter inch overall with a four inch blade. It is a big, full size knife. It is very, very weighty. Let's give you that size comparison against what I was talking about. Put it up next to the bodega. Boom and boom. So you see, yeah, it's even bigger than a bodega. Bodega is not a really big knife, but it's got some size to it. It's got some thickness and some heft. And for those curious, up against another popular Russian knife, yes, my uh, custom division, Shurigorov, which I'm still madly in love with. And you see it's also quite a bit larger than that. You'll also notice that there's a wonderful ergonomic shape to it. It's got a nice curvature to the frame. And then, of course, the blade has a bit of a cant. And then it comes up to almost a banana-shaped blade, which I'm not usually a fan of. But on this knife, it just works. It's got 
like this uh, almost like an exotic car kind of feeling to the lines of it. Very, very cool. Let's get the other two guys out of the way here. <clears throat> and let's break down the knife. Alright, so you're looking at all titanium, and this is not an inexpensively made thing. What you're looking at is a frame inside. So here you have your liners and your frame. That's also going to be what you're seeing back behind here and in here coming up to the separate backspacer. So you've got your liners, which are all skeletonized, cut out, and running through. Then you have your backspacer, which is really wonderfully done as well. You've got an opening there for a lanyard if you choose to add one. Love how it drops down inside the frame. Uh, a lot like what Dustin Turpin does with the way it just kind of trails off and drops into the frame. And then the frames obviously come up here. They're skeletonized there. Milled out very, very deeply on each side as it goes into, almost looks like the blade is part of it. It's really cool how they did that. Then you have the overlays of titanium. And that's what's coming up and around here. Give you a nice shot from the back to let you see how many segments and how many pieces there are. This is actually, the overlay is actually one piece, but they've milled it so deeply here, it looks like they're sectioned and they're two different pieces. Obviously, they're not because you see there's no hardware attaching the overlay onto the frame. All the hardware is up here. So, hardware back here is sandwiching everything together and holding in the backspacer. Uh, another piece of hardware here holding everything together and into the backspacer. Then, of course, your pivot. And all the hardware is really clean and goes with the theme of the knife very, very nicely. Then you have the same matching hardware to hold the clip in place. Then kind of like another stabilizing point so it doesn't uh, move back and forth, I suppose. Nice clean design. Pocket clip works great, by the way. Like I said, I've been carrying this pretty much every day since I got it. I am sorely addicted to this knife. Then you've got a great combination of finishes. So you've got your dark, dark matte areas, and then they've gone across all the highlights, all the high areas, all the flats, and done a nice, clean satin finish on them. And that allows you to catch the highlights and all of the angles that are actually on this knife. And I honestly think that without those little highlights, that you would lose some of the effectiveness of this design. They've skeletonized the flipper tab as well. Now, for all this skeletonization, you would think that I'm holding a really lightweight knife. Uh, no, like I said, it weighs just about seven ounces, just about the same thing as the, uh, as the Bodega does. But there's a lot of titanium here, and they didn't go thin. And that's one of the things I was a little bit worried about, you know, because they're, they're, you know, you're overlaying so many materials here that you would think that they're going to go really thin on everything so that it fit into the hand. What I got as a nice surprise was a thick, chunky knife. Well, it's like holding a Kirby Lambert. A thick, chunky knife that's got some serious substance to it. You know you're holding uh, something very, very impressive when you've got it in your hand. Another thing I like is the finish work they chose to do. It's, I don't know how to describe it. I've got to find an area that has it the best. Right here in the relief cut. It's almost like it's glittered. It is so wickedly cool, especially in the sunlight. It's a very rough orange peel finish. And they've done a great job finishing it. And again, uh, satin highlights on the flats. Then it gets into the, the matte finishes down inside the milled grooves. I mean, everything about this was really well thought out. Love this top swedge. You've got a compound grind. If I had my way, I'd love to see... I'd love to see this section here a little bit more pronounced. And honestly, if this were a fully hand ground blade, it probably would be a little bit more pronounced. But it still looks great, looks fantastic. It's got a very aggressive overall profile. One of the things that I'm getting asked a lot is, how comfortable is it in the hands? How many hot spots are there? Because everything is flat, everything has an edge to it. 
and you have areas that stick out further than other areas to create this unique look, but how does it actually feel in the hand? I'll be honest with you, it does not feel bad. There is no real sharpness to it uh, in my hand. They're really good about kind of hammering off all the contact points and flattening it off and making it feel good in the hand. Now, yes, you're going to get some edges back here. You're going to get some edges up here, especially right up around here. I mean, you're not really running your fingers up around that area too often, but yet yeah, there are actual corners here that you want to be mindful of. S35 VN steel, which is marked right here on the spine of the blade. Dun, dun, dun. And one of the interesting features, instead of having an internal stop pin or having you know a big giant stop pin back here or hammered into or press fit into the blade, what they've done, here are your stop pins. You do not see them because just like that Richard Rogers that um, I did back in June, yeah, it's kind of like this garage door thing where they're hidden when the knife is closed and they retract into the frame to become hidden when the knife is open. So you really never see your stop pins. The action. Oh my God, the action. Now I can't speak to the consistency of these knives because I'm only holding my knife. I'm only holding one example. If you were to, to run all 30 through your hands, maybe there's going to be some variances between the detent strengths and the smoothness and the action, which is fairly common in a mid-tech knife. They're not all going to be dead on. You know, even in a custom knife, you're never going to pick up two custom knives by any one maker and expect them to be exactly the same in their action. So I can't speak to that because that's one of the concerns, I'm sure, for somebody that looks at the price tag and goes, okay, this is $1,070 U.S. dollars. This is not an inexpensive knife. That actually puts it up in the price range, mid-tech wise, just like the Bodega. So, does it live up to something like that? Because a lot of people are going to have to sit down and go, okay, I'm going to drop $1,070 on a knife. That could put me into, actually, direct price from Todd Begg would have been a lightning strike carbon fiber Bodega. This was $950 uh, direct price. You're not going to pay that these days. You're going to pay fourteen, fifteen hundred for this because they don't make it anymore. But you have to kind of go apples, apples to apples. So if I'm going to spend a thousand dollars on a knife, that could put me in a really good quality, full custom knife from any number of great makers, or it puts me into the upper echelon, the elite of the few mid techs that are in that price range. And which way should I go? I'm not really going to tell you which way to go because it, it's such a personal decision. I have gotten to the point that I have gotten now, I've gotten rid of almost every one of my production knives. Um, I'm only keeping a handful of mid-tech knives. I've gotten rid of most everything except for my bodegas. And now I've got this. And it's really, really changed my mind about what mid-tech can be. Now, if you're looking for a $500 mid-tech, there are some really great options out there. But you couldn't do that, at least I don't think. I don't believe that you could do something with this degree of detail, with all of this work, and offer it for $500. I just don't see how it's possible. You look at the $500 and $600 mid-techs that are out there, they're very basic. They're an all-completely stonewashed knife. Um, they're usually very plain handles or some uh, CNC mill work that's been done in there. It's a very simple, basic pattern and they keep a very basic finish on the blades, and they generally won't be compound uh, ground blades. So I really think you're getting your money's worth by the num numerous different finishes, the great grinds on the blade. It is a very sharp blade, by the way. All of this intricate work that's been done, all of the fitting, because you got to realize at some point, you know, human hands are going to have to come in contact with this and hand fit everything, hand set that lock, hand set that detent, which is a phenomenal detent, and do everything that's required to give you something that's this jaw dropping. I have rarely had so much of an overwhelming response in the positive anyway 
to any one knife I've owned. Only a handful have really gotten people just totally fired up. And from the very first picture I posted of this, people were going, holy shit, this thing is incredible. And I'm going to tell you right now, from holding it in my own hands, I say the same thing. I'm still saying it. You know, and this is coming off the heels of my GTC arrival and some other really epic, really great knives. And I'm still completely blown away. This is one of my favorite knives. There's so much work that you can feel in this knife when you pick it up and when you handle it. So if you're worried about spending that kind of money and thinking, well, it's a mid-tech, well, it's made in Russia, they do some CNC work and they farm out some of the basic work uh, to a CNC factory in China. I'm spending premium money that could get me into a custom. I'm really worried about how this thing, the fit and finish is going to be, how it's going to feel in the hand. Is it going to feel cheap and chintzy? No. Not that I would ever subject this to any kind of, you know, hardcore series, hard use. It has the feeling. I mean, it's like holding a Medford or a Direware or something in that range where you go, holy shit, this thing feels like a friggin' tank. It feels like it could take on the world. It really does. You know what? I liken this a lot to my Hobax. This has a very Hoback feel in the way that it operates, the way that it, yeah, how stout it feels in the hand. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just don't know that it's something that anybody would use in the same manner. This is really going to be a collector's showpiece. It may be pocket jewelry. For me, you guys know me, I'm going to carry every knife I own, and if it doesn't get carried, I sell it. And if something arises and something's going to get cut that day, I just reach for whatever's in my pocket. I don't care if it's a $300 production knife or a $3,000 custom. They're made to cut. They're made to do shit. But I'm not purposefully going out there and doing stupid shit like prying open paint cans and shit. This is the kind of knife that if I know that I'm going somewhere and I've got to do, I don't know, God knows what. And it could be somewhat abusive on my knife. Fuck no, I'm not going to carry this. I'm going to carry something that, you know what, if I chip the blade, not that big of a deal or something like that. This is one that I'm going to carry with me on a daily basis when I know I'm not doing crazy shit. Because, you know what, I'm a suburban dude. I don't really do a lot of crazy shit anyway. But this is a knife that instills within you the confidence that it could handle any task that you throw at it. So if you've had a concern... And you've looked at it and went, well, I think it's beautiful. I think it's a bitch in design. But I don't know if the quality is there. I haven't sampled or handled any of their products. Lose those concerns. You should not have those concerns. It is a substantial piece of titanium in the hands. I mean, just look at the construction of this thing. Look how meticulous all of that work is. And everything's clean. You don't see a nasty uh, backside of the blade or, or lock face. Everything looks completely finished, inside and out. And that's the hallmark, as we know, of a good custom. We've all gotten customs we paid six, seven, eight hundred dollars for that you're like, ah, I can't believe the maker let it out of his shop like that. You know, it's all just just raw, basic, chewed up steel in there. They didn't bother to finish it off. You know, and there's, you know, marks on the inside of the frames and shit because, well, nobody's going to see it. This is a knife that was well thought out and well executed all the way around. I do feel like I'm holding $1,000 worth of full custom in my hands. And this is why I'm going to continue to own more and more knives. As each knife comes out that they make, you're going to be seeing them on my channel because I'm excited about them. I think they are offering something wildly different and shit that you just can't get your hands on. And by the way, if you are a Shirogorov fan and you feel the need to uh, pony up the bucks and get something like this, they do sell Shir they do sell Shirogorovs, by the way. They're in Russia. they they have access to this stuff. So you can go to fromrussiawithknives.com and buy your Shirogorovs through them. I'm not saying they're gonna be the best possible prices, but really, there are no best possible prices anymore. That ship has long fucking sailed. That's gone. So, you know, get to know Mike. 
bullshit with him a little bit. Um, understand that English is not his first language, so be a little patient with that. But uh, he's very articulate, and he gets his point across very easily. Uh, he's a great guy. He's very friendly. He loves the knife community. He loves helping people out. And if there's any way he can get you a Shiro, he'll certainly do it. But focus on this. Oh, my God. Just absolutely mind-blowing. I really am completely, completely enthralled by this knife. And it's one of the very few that when I first opened the box, even my wife went, wow, that's a really nice knife. My wife doesn't give a shit about knives. But you can't help but look at something like this as almost a piece of art. Uh, you will get a birth certificate in the packaging. I forgot to bring it over here to my little studio setup. Uh, it doesn't come in a box. What they do is they wrap it up in this really, it's almost like this suede-like material and they... Um, kind of bind it and tie it off. It's, it's a really classy presentation. It almost looks like something you would get uh, with a Japanese knife. It's just very, 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 very cool. Uh, and you, you get the birth certificate with it and shows, you know, it's hand signed, hand numbered, all that kind of good stuff. All right, guys, I'm out of here for now. I've got some more stuff to get taken care of. Thank you for your patience. I apologize that I have not been uploading videos as often as I used to. Unfortunately, there's just not enough time in my day, but I wanted to make sure this got done and got out there and, uh, you know, leave me your feedback down below. Tell me what you think. I'll see you guys on the next video.